Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc AB problem set number one. Um, there's a link to the problems in the description below and a link to a playlist of all the problem sets as well. So let's go. All right, use the limit definition to find dy dx for y equals x root x plus three. All right, so what is the limit definition? Well, the limit definition says f prime of x equals, the limit is h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You really gotta know that if you're gonna be successful. Um, so I'm gonna start off by just like writing that down. So dy dx is the limit as h approaches zero. So I have to do uh, the function of x plus h. So that's gonna be every x gets replaced with x plus h. So uh, it'll be x plus h radical x plus h plus three minus the original function, which is x root x plus three, all divided by h. So this is a non-standard problem, uh, I would say. A little harder than what you'll see uh, like on an AP exam, but certainly in the class you might see it. Anytime you have a radical uh, in the limit definition, you're not really sure what to do, or a limit in general, uh, try rationalizing. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the top, which is the entire top, except I'm going to change that minus sign into a plus sign. And multiply the top and the bottom by that. So that's what this will look like. Um, and now what I'm going to do is just kind of expand Band the top. So when you multiply conjugates in this way, you always get the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. So that's what I'm going to do here. So in these videos, I'm not going to be showing like all of the work. I'm going to be putting it down and then, you know, ask questions if you have them in the comments or if you're in my class, ask them in class. Um, so, you know, we have x plus h quantity squared, then the radical disappears. So we just have x plus h plus 3 minus we get the x squared and then the radical disappears x plus three that's a squared minus b squared the denominator still the same don't forget the h from the original denominator uh, i see people forget that a lot now what i'm going to do is i'm going to magically on the side just expand the whole numerator so like i'm i'm squaring things i'm multiplying i'm distributing whatever uh collecting like terms when i did that i've ended up here so i have 3h x squared plus 3h squared x plus 6h x plus h cubed plus 3h squared. All right, that's all over the denominator that we have. Now, if you look, every well, everything in the numerator has an h. If everything in the numerator at this point doesn't still have an h, you've done something wrong, go back and try to figure it out. But there is an h left over for everything in the numerator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel one h from everything in the numerator with the h in the denominator which will leave me with this. Now I can actually take the limit. So I'm gonna drop, I'm not gonna write the limit equal as h approaches zero anymore. I'm just gonna plug in zero for h. When I do that, I'm left with three x squared plus six x over two x root x plus threes, right? Because the h's were zero, so root x plus h plus three became root x plus three. x plus h became x. So there are just two x root x plus threes. And then if you look at that, there's uh, they have a common x. And then also we can take a three out of the numerator. So we're gonna get our final answer of three quantity x plus two all over two root x plus three. All right, next problem. Given f of x equals two x minus one over three x plus two, we wanna find f prime of x, the tangent at x equals one, the average rate of change on zero to one, and then the secant line on zero to one. All right, so. For part A, instead of limit definition, I'm gonna use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is gonna be, uh, we're gonna have bottom times the derivative of the top, and then minus top times the derivative of the bottom, and then all over the bottom squared. And then if we clean this up, which you definitely should in a lot of cases, maybe not always, but you know, in this case for sure, uh, we get f prime of x is seven over quantity three x plus two squared. All right, so that's part A. Uh, for part B, we want the tangent at x equals one. So I need to know f of one. Well, f of one, uh, if we just plug in, so we're plugging one and we get two minus one is one, three plus two is five. Uh, f prime of one, we're gonna plug into the derivative uh, to get f prime of one is seven over 25. And then our tangent line, we're gonna use point slope form. Y minus one fifth equals seven over 25, quantity x minus one, nice. All right, part C, average rate of change. Average rate of change is algebra one slope. You gotta say that to yourself a lot. That's gonna come up a lot in this course. Um, so average rate of change, I don't like that abbreviation, but people use it, um, is algebra one slope. So all I have to really find is f of one minus f of zero over one minus zero. I'm gonna plug in, I already know what f of one is from the previous part. Um, f of zero, uh, you just get negative one half. 
and then over one minus zero. And then that simplifies to seven tenths. That's our average rate of change. And then the secant lines, secant lines are just algebra one lines. We just need two points. So we kind of have two points because we just calculated that slope. Um, so our two points are zero, negative one half, and then one, one fifth. And we already know the slope is seven tenths because it was the average rate of change. And then our secant line, I'm also gonna write in point slope form. So y minus one fifth is seven tenths x minus one, or because point slope form, uh, y plus one half, because it's minus negative one half, equals seven tenths x minus zero. Um, that's question number two. And let's take a look at question number three, which is the last question in this problem set, which is good. I'm trying to make all of my videos for these under 10 minutes, which maybe I'm going fast, slow the video down, whatever. Um, that's my goal. And I don't know how many problem sets there will be, but we're, we're gonna go for it. All right, for the function shown above, okay. Uh, use a secant line to approximate f of two. Is this an over or underestimate? All right, so a secant line, I'm gonna need the slope. So to find the slope, uh, I'm gonna do uh, 15 minus five over six minus zero. Just use the two ordered pairs, that's algebra one. Um, our secant line, I'm gonna use point slope form. So we'll go with y minus five is five thirds quantity x minus zero. And then to approximate f of two, uh, you move the five in your secant line over. So we have five plus five thirds x minus zero, uh, and then sub in. So we say f of two approximately equal to. That approximate sign is really important. Uh, and then we plug in and we get, uh, I get 25 over three, which I think is right. Uh, 15 plus 10, 25, yeah. Um, so now if you like look at the picture, you can see that's our secant line. It's just going through two points. Obviously the secant line is above the function. So if I use the secant line to approximate a value of a function, I'm gonna get a bigger value. Um, so this, no need to watch that. This is an overestimate. And then the next question is, if we use the tangent line to approximate f of two, would this give an over or underestimate? Well, let's draw in the tangent line. You can see the tangent line is below the curve. So since the tangent line is below the curve, uh, the tangent line would give an underestimate. However, when I was like writing up my solutions to this, I kind of had the thought like, is this a bad question because it doesn't tell you where to use the tangent line? I assume the question would have said the tangent line somewhere between zero and six if someone better at writing problems had written this problem. Um, but anyway, that's problem set number one. Uh, I hope you come back and do the rest of the problem sets. There's gonna be a lot of them. I'm trying for like one a day. I don't know when I'll lose steam on that. We'll see. Uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful and good luck.